Hello everybody and of course welcome back to this Field of Glory 2 Tactica. So this is of course uh, my battle analysis of the rise and fall of Carthage. And of course this is my round 3 Romano versus Carthaginian. As if you've watched the Carthaginian one already and the uh, and the comparison video, we were triumphant as the Carthaginian forces. And of course, if you've watched the Roman battle, you'll realise we were actually um, victorious in the Roman round. I've got to say a big thank you to my opponent who played amazingly. Tough two lists of play. Um, and of course, both with their strength. I think, like I said in the uh, previous uh, Tactica and look at the all of the uh, factions, uh, the Roman lack the cavalry and the elephant action uh, towards this battle. And of course, in my Carthage Union game, the cavalry were the key point. And in the uh, my what you're going to see now, uh, the Chiari, uh, an anti cavalry tactics which I performed. I think I performed okay, um, and I think that, of course, there's always room for improvement in every game you play, but the best thing you can do, ladies and gentlemen, in any Field of Glory 2, or probably any Slivering game that I play, is just enjoy your game, learn from the loss, learn from the win, but it's nice to win. So, here we are, the Roman forces are here. Like I said before, Tiarii, 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 Hastate Principles, Veteran Hastate Principles. And of course, the meager cavalry force we are allowed in this in this, uh, in this this point and also this army list. Tiarii are going to be the backbone and block any cavalry action. As you can see, we've got, um, which I, to be honest with you, looking, knowing what I know now, what happened in this battle, the left side was of course a meat grinder in this position to the to the north uh, against Spanish which of course do actually really really do well against the smaller chariots so I've got four units here maybe should have reduced that down to three units uh, and then plugged one of the start eye principles to the left uh, and then of course or, or maybe even just switching this around and having another chariot on the right to anti but even though we did fantastically on the right anyway it didn't particularly matter uh, but in hindsight that's what I'll do. Um, of course, the main battle line with the one, two, three, four units of veterans, which just, they do the damage. They do the damage. So there we go. We've got a good battle line. The tactic is to uh, block the right and left of any cavalry shenanigans. Plug on home with the uh, hammer anvil tactics that you call Romanos. I'm going to click play and just have a look at his list. And uh, this video with 34 minutes, we probably could just watch most of it and talk about it. But as you can see, um, strong force of the Carthaginian forces. I'm kind of bobbing my head back and forth here in amusement, as I always do. Um, four squads of elephant, on, uh, squ four squads of elephant, squ four squads of cavalry, fifth in the rear, elephant in the centre. Uh, African spearmen in the centre, followed by supporting Spanish and mercenary hoplites centre and the left flank. Um, what I deem to be a problem in this map up is the wood to the left side does show a blob. It's just it, you can hide stuff in there. And in my Carthaginian game, I hid Spanish in there, which was a correct assumption to do, just to make them go across without being unseen. Uh, so the enemy has to reposition, or if they're too far ahead, they can't reposition. Here we go. My cavalry is, of course, uh, um, actually in the rear of my line, so it can be moved where it needs to be. Ele I don't want it to go near the elephant, of course. And that is always a mistake that even a veteran player as myself do. When you get a little bit carried away in the combat of galore, uh, sometimes your elephant does end up with one square in your thing. Plenty of lights. I think I count one, two, three, four. Was that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units of light troops. Uh, okay, uh, one one unit of slingers plus uh, a, a meager handful of javelin troops ready to hopefully outlight him as you can see i don't think he's got enough lights here um and i want to weaken him up and then of course then the histartai principles just um, mess him up as you can see probably in a couple turns town town when we get down when we get to it uh, we'll see the fact is um my um lights just harass all game so we're going to skip ahead slightly because we want to get to the action so of course cavalry moved up to the right which we expected um but I charged this Chiara unit in the 
in the in the fan in the point that it will zone control. So my issue now, I zone control him. I keep him in that place, and that's what I want to do. I don't in theory want to charge him. I want to keep him in place. So remember that, like I said, playing like Vikings or anything, not playing Normans, any good lancers, your zone of control is just as good as a charge, not as charging them, just keeping them there in that zone of control. And as you can see, we got the. Uh, the light fight that will ins enslave right now. A particularly difficult one. There's that POA advantage. I think it works out at 100. Still concerned about that left side. I wish I sent a light unit in there just to even see what it is. And then maybe I could have uh, staggered my left flank a little bit better or pulled one unit to the thing. But um, it does get a bit messy here. But I, I still think we, we played thing. And I think I wasted probably one unit or two units of veterans on the right side due to trying to block some of that cavalry up. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a hard fight for the Carthaginians. My money wasn't on the Carthaginians, even though I won my side. Carf I think Carthage was particularly struggling here uh, because of the lack of. Um, I think the word is impact troop, heavy foot impact, because a lot of the Carthage forces are, of course, um, impact offensive spearmen. I think most. I think even the Hopperites are, and you'll see coming up. I think to turn twenty twenty to nineteen. On the turn count, when we actually do start get chucking that impact, as you can see, there is a a Spanish unit coming into the main line, um, <coughs> which is just going to get absolutely hammered. And here we go with the cavalry to the right side. I'm continuing to push it. Like I said, I can't let that cavalry unit get around uh, to cause any any issues there. Um, and he's trying to do it really well. Don't be wrong. I'm I'm umming ahhing if I've actually got position. And you can see a slight repositioning of some Italian. Uh, African spearmen on the centre line where before the elephant, uh, he is actually moving around to use the hill. And here come the Spanish from the woods, which to be honest with you, I neglect to see how many actually come out there. You see, I don't mind him having this um, this POA advantage of the hill. My issue is I want to <coughs> excuse me, I want to get up there and to start punishing him as soon as possible with impact. And this is why. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> this is why I'm sitting there shooting him up, excuse me. Uh, and there we go, yet again, punishing the uh, poor javelin troops with a nice little disruption there. And there we go. Like I said, I think the two veteran units on this right side are, are too far over. I think these are too far over, not particularly um, doing anything particularly interesting at this moment in time. Um, but yeah, there we go. And I staggered the left side with a TRI. Here we go again, yet again, blocking him out blocking him out. I don't want him to run on that right side. This is why I brought the other cavalry from the left side to the right side to support the other cavalry block. And of course the Italian foot keep chasing him down, not letting him stop. And I think here as well, we start to punish him quite well with the um, with the javelin troops. This third, second cavalry unit coming back in. Two cavalry units I can have in total. Um, but got to support that right. So there we go. We did stagger that flank on the left, as you can see. Um, purely to defend should have like i said moved at least had one hastati principal or a veteran you know on that left side to smash because it would have hurt what actually comes out of the woods um becoming about halfway into the game just before halfway so it is all heating up everywhere here we go this is it the spearman spanish patatas bravas everywhere spicy potatoes spicy potatoes but we're here to hit the things and i get some lucky um charges here but he's in my face he's ready for a rumble i'm ready to block the crap out of him on this left this right side simple as him i'm not letting him get away my mistake there with that charge with the trii and here we go here we go this i love this one straight to disorder disorder central population the mercenary hoplites but He's outnumbered me on the left. Panic stations. Regardless of the superiority, got panic. Here we go. We try and do some charging, uh, just to try and think. And we get really lucky. We get really lucky here because the, the the line kind of envelops onto his side on the field here. So I'm bricking it here. I've made a huge mistake charging that. That TRI unit there, get charged in, was <laughs> not particularly great. I should have backed the veterans off and turned them to the left, because it turns into a little bit of a... Um, uh, my line starts to crump a little bit. But the high-impact, effective troops of the Romans pu purely showing what they can do. Straight down disrupted. So here, after this, I'm thinking, 
Brilliant. But even here on the centre line, uh, the Histartai principles are particularly at a disadvantage here. As you saw, that combat uh, modifier, that was not great there for the uh, for the Histartai principles. So this is like I'm talking about with some combats. Even when the combat, some of the combats are worse, and they will lose eventually, just them being engaged and holding that unit up is a positive, even though it could happen disaster you've got to play a little bit tricksy um that's the way i see it it's not particularly a bad way of playing it but it's hard to to have acceptable risk inside field of glory too but any strategy game that is as well there we go again and i want to, i tried to get a rear charge there on the um, javelin troops i actually fled already I'm really interested in the last couple of games i've actually had to go through all the video because i've actually really liked what i did and i understand now as an instinct in that moment of time why I did that but of course hindsight there is a couple of things like the left side I would have particularly reconsidered uh, there's me trying to make up with some stones but it didn't particularly work and here we go I tried to charge and then to charge the rear charge there but unfortunately uh, not but zone of control the zone of control is good and then the Chirari are doing well there yet again but he did escape with one unit on the right and then we turn around to hopefully try and punish one thing i didn't want this cavalry unit to come back is come back and start hunting me we do have the sub general in that cavalry unit to the south which is we'll hopefully have the poa advantage so i thought moving the italian foot into the woods if he has to move into the woods and we can get him in there so yeah i'm still not particularly happy here the staggered left side is not great but and unfortunately i think i don't use my lights to the full capacity i should because of on the Spanish. And I think it is actually to his advantage. But he gets a flank attack there against the Histartai. Uh, sorry, the Chirari. But they do last longer than the thing. This is the mistake. The couple of mistakes I did straight away here. And, and I accept that. And that is the way the, that's the way it's happened. But I think the elephant here gets really unlucky. I don't think he's on top of the hill having the POA advantage. So here we go. Like I said before. Uh, we have peer away. We have uh, zone of control. The cavalry out. The cavalry has no choice to either turn or flee, and he's decided to flee. Okay, so he's negating. He, even though he's kiting a significant portion of my uh, forces away from this main battle line, the fact is we still have control. We do not want to lose control here. We, when we lose control, the cavalry will reap my rear line, and that, that cannot happen uh, because. I'm trying my hardest to block him in. It's a bad day on that left side. Bad magic. Triari cannot fight uh, the big block units like that. And here we are again. The, the principles getting fought, fought first because they're a negative combat. But actually playing really well there, that pushback. <clears throat> but them two sub-general units on that centre point on the map is crazy. It gets a good couple of rallies. I do actually... There's one pursue here that I think something bugged. Yeah, that was it. Don't know if this was a bug. I'm going to turn the volume up. If you just go back here, the combat here... If you look at the points, this makes me a bit weird. So this fight, this combat's fine. The second combat's fine. But it's the combat just after this with the uh, veteran uh, Startai principles and the African... Here we go. Are you ready for it? Not this one. Pushback, which is fine. You see, it tries to fall back. And I don't know if that's a bug or not, because I think they should have broke. And watch it again. Yeah, I, I don't know if that was a bug or not, because that was something I'm interested to see. And hopefully Richard Brody is watching that. I'll have to go and tell him about it, um, because... Um, I'll tell him what minute it was in. That was like 15, 15 minutes into this video. So at least I can have some... Well, 15 minutes into this uh, game. So I'll have to mention that. So left side getting hammered. Uh, left, right and centre. Uh, but I'm particularly still happy with that. But, but they're just now holding that flank up. Um, just amazingly well. Because I overplayed my cards massively. And there it goes. He's turned around. We've rear, rear attacked him. But it doesn't particularly matter. Because he's not actually in... Uh, um, Engaged further there. We, ch we chuck the general into the um, trip uh, start eye principles just for the fact that it's given that extra POA advantage to hopefully smash that elephant up. Of course, the cavalry to this mid side, this is where we use the veteran units and the Italian foot as blockers. So here I'm laughing. Absolutely laughing here. 
just got to keep moving. And then I get a lucky charge on that because they pop out the wood to the right and then we get a good impact. Um, and then, of course, we're going to keep charging, keep going. And this is where I actually get really lucky and actually starting to punish that cavalry on the right side. I don't know if I get a disruption. I did. Perfect time. And my cavalry is now like, come me, bro. I've got my sub-general, my POA advantage. I'm coming for you. Unfortunately here, another combat with the Historic High Principles where they will give a good impact, but the prolonged combat will actually make them lose. And we've got a good couple of impact attacks which actually dis disrupt his line. But that fragmented unit there, I still think that was a bug. I still think it was a bug. And I don't know why. I just don't know why they fell back. I reckon they should have broke. But it's been played. I don't know if it was a broke uh, thing or not. And yes, both Carthaginian forces use that same hill in this uh, thing. So I use this hill and he used this hill. Uh, and there's, of course, the Chirari breaking. Um, luckily in his turn rather than my turn. Uh, if they broke in my turn, he would have been able to manoeuvre one turn earlier. So sometimes things breaking in opposite turns does particularly help. And of course, there's the disruption of the, arch, of the javelin troops that... Um, light attack getting pretty vicious you see there's a, a negative to charge his his cavalry unit here now the fact is it um the way i see it if you charge a cavalry a noble cavalry unit or a unit that evades and its direction and you charge it to the direction of your line it may evade towards your line and be able to charge you there we go oh the chari are getting battered but they're highly skilled, and they, like I mentioned about the uh, Histarti principles, they're not the most fantastic troops, but as you can see there, they're just backing them forth in. We're doing pretty well on that right side. This is where I got slightly conscious about the cavalry here, just turning and coming back this way. But this is why the two veteran units are here, pushing forward, keeping a zone of control all around them on that extreme right side. Yeah, please comment below if you feel I did wrong there. But I think that's what they just, even though they're particularly not going to be doing much there, they're still uh, holding the uh, uh, line particularly well. And there in the break, you see most of these troops are very, except, uh, what's the word, they will break or disorder quite easily. But that general, the sub general, and there we go, we thought bugger it, in we go lads, fragmented, got to go in there. So we're slightly confident, but of course still cautious of the left side. Kill still cautious of the uh, um, uh, cavalry, but we're still fighting fit here. Of course, the elephant still falling on my side. Breaking that unit of uh, fragmenting that unit of mercy hoplites in the corner was quite handy because then we could start encroaching around his line. There we go, zone of control. Like I said, I'm not charging it. I'm just going to sit there and go. What you gonna do, bro? What you gonna do? And there we go, we start having a match and I decide to charge my veterans through rather than charging the lights through. And then another zone of control issue for him there, so he's got a really bad day. But regardless of that, you could still say it was a waste of my uh, uh, waste of my veteran units. Uh, but regardless of that, I still think they did a fantastic job. And there we go, advancing the Italian foot through the woods. And this is where I do sit there. This is where I think, do I shoot? I think I shoot first and then I will charge in. Because even with that rough terrain which I would have landed on, you see, it's all about where you land. And I didn't want to pursue him into my, uh, into my, into my, um, into my ranks in my rear. My general fell on the Chariai, but the fact is, he wasn't anywhere near anybody, which was lucky. But their left side is all is he's, he could turn around, but I think he mostly concentrates on the Chariai here. Um, but. Mm, Still mildly confident, 1% um, space here for victory. Um, it's just turned into a meat grinder, and I'm happy for him to chomp through them. If he's going to engage all of them and try to flank them, it, at least all my army on the right side can just sit there hurting him. Yeah, we... Um, s are, it, yeah, he just forms up, but does turn one Spanish unit around with a commander on that left flank, as you can see. And like I said, this start type principle is not winning particularly well, but holding his forces static. Like I said, acceptable loss. There we go, his cavalry units just faffing around on that right side. And there goes his cavalry there. Oh, it's going to get interesting. Uh, 
And there he goes. He blocks his own unit up there. Actually, I'm just going to pause this because this is not something I want to speak about. As you can see, he charged in there. I don't know if this was on purpose or not, but the unit here blocks him from pushing back, meaning that unit is stuck in combat, uh, for, for better or worse. Um, disrupting the elephant with a Histanti principle with the general in, which was fantastic. Disruption starting really to hit on his, on his uh, right side now. The Romans, mean business. There goes the mercenary hoplites. Everybody holding firm. Breaking the Spanish on the rear. Giving him several options. Disrupting the uh, sp um, African spearmen. It's, it's a busy game. It's busy here. We're just hacking away. And the elephant fragmented. There's the break. And now I'm getting slightly more confident here. Even though with the slight failure of the TRA on the left side. It's... Coming for you, Baba. We're coming for you. And there we go. We, I decided to zone of control. I wanted, and I think I turned the. Um, I don't know where I turned them. The what do you call it? The veteran. The veteran. Uh, Star type principles behind that cavalry unit. Do I charge? What do I do here? I can't remember actually. No, I turned towards his line because they need all the help they can do against them. Uh, general in the um, mercenary hoplites. A hard list for the Carthaginians to fight, regardless. I surprised they even won mine. And it was, I think, very, very close because I got some good rallies. And there we go. Just unfortunately, the Spanish absolutely hacking. And they did advantages there. You see, acceptable loss there. Like I said, I, I'm I'm happy for them to be annoying more than anything. I don't mind them. Uh, and there we go. I try to at least try to uh, take some strength numbers off that unit. At this point, I should have retreated the light troops back to the right to engage the cavalry unit, which is about to enter the woods. Um, and like as you can see here, we have this like little hacking fight there with the cavalry. And then I go here. You know what? What did I do here? Did I? Go, I think I was deciding to fall back, um, so he couldn't charge, or I could do some shenanigans. And I'm entirely sure my idea was there. And there we go. I think. Well, I think. Oh, we're gonna have to go and come back to the fight. There were even a couple of turns of ammunition each. And there was a rally for his cavalry on the hill. If he put cavalry on both ends, I think we would have dealt with them on the left side and then been less pressured on the right. There's another flank attack on the TRI. Oh. And off the go. One turn. That's an expensive point cost as well. So the reason I turned them there was so I wouldn't get flanked with the veterans. That was that was a pur on purpose. Here come the medium, the lights charging, but we've got the flank of the um the veterans coming down he's just trying to block tactics so he's had to retreat his cavalry right back to his line so literally just ignoring it there we go they hold firm got the cavalry on the combats on the center with the histarti which are particularly going poorly for me so i'm just hopefully they're holding up until we can just start attacking through here which is pretty good we've got a good line now on this center so it's hopefully just fall over to that side of the map quite easily Get a lucky fragment on the Spanish there, but only because I was lucky with some impacts. <clears throat> and he's got a lot of medium foot, but the medium foot who take a lot of cohesion checks against um, charges. So we change the general into that unit and then we're going to drop that flank, which we need to. Holding firm. So we retreat back and we look here and go, yeah, that's good enough. They're good enough numbers for us. And as well, I think, yeah, we actually push him back. So we're at the same level of POA advantage because he's one higher than us, but at least we're back on the hill. So there we go again. We think, oh, here comes that cavalry. And we're thinking not to engage, not to engage. Just because if it pursued, it's probably very negative at the moment just because it's in the woods and disordered. We have nothing to do but charge the uh, lights there. 
You see, he's kept that unit of lights right behind her. I don't know for a reason to keep them in combat or not. This is what I thought. Or I, I don't know if that was on purpose or not. And there we go, we go. I think we... I don't know what we do with that. A start high principal unit that's not engaged. So, bar anything at the moment, <coughs> the only mistake I made is the left side with that um, silly... Uh, Triaria wall, but it was on the full fact that I thought he may have cavalry um, advancing and causing some shenanigans, and here we are at the mercy of him just sitting there about to turn around, but we've got a disrupted and fragmented unit on that left, and here we go, that were fact is we need to start coming to hunt the uh, cavalry down in the woods, so we're about 26 minutes out of the 34, so probably about 9 minutes left on the battle <coughs> it's still particularly going our way but, like I said um, we played well, and we we start. I start to get a little bit precarious on this cavalry front, but yeah, I think we're pretty safe for the point here. Cavalry on the hill rallying. Uh, uh, for a second, the elephant was going. I was thought the elephant was going to rally. There's the charge in. There's not a flank which I was happy with uh, because at least they're going to hold up a couple more turns and just be the cannon fodder. There comes the cavalry off the hill to threaten the Italian foot. Uh, that could go bad for me because the Italian foot will uh, particularly die horrendous disruption from the veterans, which was fantastic. There's me getting flank attacked a bit by uh, by his lights, but I'm happy about that. I don't mind that because <clears throat> he drops both of them in one turn. The Hussartai principle starting to get massed up on that hill. The combat has ensued for a long time. I'm blocking my unit on top of that hill with them light unit. That there. Here we go. And they explode. Do they go now? This is what I want. I want to see some disruption happen. Nope. Everybody holds firm. King of the hill. There goes the lights in the combat. Bringing us back to 15% of victory. I'm just sat there hoping on the left side it just breaks. Uh, but we've got a good couple of flank attacks now on this uh, centre point onto the hill, which is fantastic. So there's the flank there. And I think we decide to move them out of the way uh, to get the flank attack on the next unit. And then we thought, oh, break that unit. You see how many points are in that top there? We go, bugger it, it's better to move that unit out of the way. Or do we flank? So I decided to flank there rather than charge the general unit and may break it due to impact. So there we go, I've got two fragmented units on the hill. Um, and that's just like, yeah, that's, that's got to be game after that because that's the majority of his forces on that centre point. And there we go, just form up against the um, uh, cav uh, infantry there. So we charge, they evade, and then we go, oh, suck it. We'll charge the Chiara into there, which you're thinking, yeah, brilliant. We'll just, and now next turn, everybody will be in there. All the lights will be in there. The Italian foot advancing over the hill. Cavalry advancing there. And we decide to charge here. I think we do actually catch them. Yeah, we did. I forgot about that. That was quite nasty, actually. And we think we need to support them, so we just need to go. Unfortunately, we end up facing the wrong way, but that's just life. And that's what all the people say. So we're thinking, bugger it, we need to go and get that cavalry in the woods and just charge it. So I did a thing advancing here, but I went, mm, no. Fragmented cavalry. I think we, t I think I decide to turn. Oh, Tiara getting mo. Actually, to be honest with you, it wasn't that bad. I, I think I was over exaggerating the massacre of the Tiara. So I don't know, do I actually turn diagonal on there? That was not a pro move at all. I didn't. I didn't turn. I should have turned diagonally so he wouldn't get the flank if he engaged in the front. His cavalry actually rounded up in the woods, uh, which was brilliant for him. But I think, unfortunately, a little bit too late. I think just the uh, anti javel, the javel, how many javelins I threw at them, uh, did very well there. The Chiarii fragmented. See, that medium foot nearly hit the rear of the uh, disrupted um, star tie principles. And, of course, the star tie got disrupted there as well. So he charged the Italian foot in the rear, if you didn't see that. So 
So here we go, throwing some stones. We're waiting for this explosion of his centre line with the two generals on that hill. There we go. Oh, can't believe how well they held there. Oh, no, this is what he said. He said congratulations, and the game didn't actually end. Um, I think it took another to his turn to actually end it. Because we're at 31 minutes. But yeah, there we go. <clears throat> we go, yep, we're going to charge all the light. That would have been, I would have enjoyed that combat for a bit. Because like, oh yeah, oh, that's going to uh, particularly hurt him there. <laughs> that's all them. It's, it's three units of javelin troops and... Uh, <clears throat> Of course, the TRI as well. So it decides to charge them in, which particularly does really bad because it exposes the flank of the cavalry against his right side. There we go, trying to punish the mercenary hoplites, and then we're thinking, "Come on, let's just let's just break him here." Chip the general to there, change that POA advantage a little bit, and there we go, break, break. Oh, look at that! Break free unit drop. And then disrupting them as well. But still not a good enough attack there to do anything. And we're thinking, oh, you know what, this is probably last turn. Let's see what happens. I can't remember if the Chiara unit actually does break down there. But what we're doing now is just overkill. Oh, we actually get a rare attack there. <laughs> that was lucky. Just a fragment, though. But just in case he rallies or does anything, it's not always worth doing it. Oh, lucky! I was hopefully going to charge him in the rear. Oh no, we did. We did the flank. God, I forgot about that. And this uh, cavalry unit having a bad day with all them lights snipping at his toes. That would have been horrendous. And I think that's particularly all we could do. The last combat was just the Chiari I fragmented. Which did unfortunately break. Uh, at least it wasn't a follow-up move. But disrupting the uh, Jav, uh, the Slingers. So ending that on 30. Does we, do we get any more points here before he breaks? All said and done, going, going and gone, there you go. So, what an epic battle with the Romans there, as you can see. Um, left went a bit south, but it, it, it holded enough that the centre and then the right could swing over towards this direction. Uh, and that was fine, that's what we wanted to see, all that way, push that way off the hill did pretty well. Fantastic. So that was a uh, both uh, one, two, and the first, second, and third round. Particularly the first and the second round went a bit pear-shaped, but the first and third uh, was definitely a 31% victory there with the Romans. The solid list, Carthaginians had the advantage of the cavalry if used properly. The Romans, better infantry. Uh, of course, the Chariari for better anti-cavalry tactics. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to subscribe to the Slytherin channel. If you're watching this on my channel, of course, um, uh, subscribing to my channel. Just Richard York into YouTube uh, for more Field of Glory antics. And stay tuned, hopefully, but very soon uh, for the fourth round of this tournament. I'm sure it's a fourth round. We'll see you soon. And I'll catch you on the next Battlefield, folks. Um, bye bye.